Hello, hello, beautiful being. What is up? My name is Jeanette, and I have some uh, cantaloupe juice here. Come on now, it's so delicious. If you've never blended a cantaloupe, what are you doing with your life? I just don't know. Mmm. Mmm. That's good. That's really good. I just posted a reel about mono meals, and I cannot even tell you how much it has helped me along my journey. So mono meals for the motherfucking win. What's up? What's up, everyone? So I wanted to start with, I'm going to be interviewing Miss uh, Jillian today and um, Jillian Berry. And before I begin, I want to let you guys know that every single Saturday, I have a show with my friend Matt from rawintuition.com. My rawintuition.com? I fucked it up. But this Saturday, we are going to be talking about how to prepare for the inevitable zombie apocalypse as a raw vegan, okay? Because it's not like the re it's not like regular preparation. You know, it's different. It requires some different equipment and stuff. So check that out on Saturdays at noon, every single Saturday, noon EST. Okay, Jillian is here, so let's all let's all just get it together. I'm really excited. I connected with Jillian two weeks ago. We did an interview on her page on her amazing YouTube channel. And I'm really excited because I loved her vibe. I have so much to ask her. I have some great questions from you guys as well. If you have any questions, leave them in the question section below. And let me bring on Jillian. So Jillian, um, you have to request. So do me a favor, boo. Get out. Get out of here and then come back in. And it's going to say, would you like to be in the live? It's really hot in my house. I forgot to put the AC on. I get really nervous on live. And so I have to remember to put the AC on and I forget. Um, yeah, so you have to leave. You have to leave. Leave and then come back. I learned that from my friend Sherry. Um, and, and when you come back, it will say, do you want to be in the live? And you do want to be in the live. So you click that. Wow, it's so good. Okay, Jillian's here. Let me fix my hair. Okay, okay. I'm gonna try not to touch my hair for the rest of the episode, but that's probably not gonna happen. All right, here we go. Sherry's here so we can start. Hey, how's it going? It's going, thank you so much for being here. Okay. No, I'm so happy to be here. I love you. I love your vibe. I think you're amazing. And I heard today our borders in Canada are opening back up. So I'm going to come to Florida soon. My dad lives down there. So I want to meet up with you in Miami for sure. Oh my God. This is the best live ever. Thank you so much. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I'm excited. Need a new best friend. Okay. Yeah. 100%. Let's do it, baby. Let's eat that yeah, on the beach. Let's yeah. go. It's gonna be awesome. I'm so excited. Yeah, wow, that's amazing for the borders. Wow. Ah, about that. Me too. Okay. Wow. So first of all, everybody, if you don't know who Jillian is, I'm sure you do. But if you don't, you have to check out her YouTube channel. It is a one, like top one of the uh, top raw vegan channels for sure on YouTube, and it's such high quality right. content and really amazing guests. And I know you have Doug Graham on soon. Yeah. And you are just killing it since I discovered you. And so let's start there because you have a very successful YouTube channel. Can you give us some advice and like maybe tips and tricks on how to grow our channel? Because I know I'm trying to grow and there's a lot of people out there as well. How yeah. did you grow? Well, that's nice. I still feel like it's small. I still want it to grow like bigger and bigger. But it is growing really great. I'm so happy with how it's growing. And I love it so much. It is literally like... I talk about it a lot on my channel, but um, going through the separation the last couple of years with my husband, like we're working on a relationship now and like trying to make things work. Um, but going through all that and just like, it was just a devastating time. So really it's just like, just I've transmuted all that energy into something positive. And starting the channel has literally just like saved me. And it is just like the best thing ever. It is just my greatest passion, puts me in line with my purpose and I love it. So. I would say if somebody's going to start a channel, definitely has to be something you're super passionate about that you could see yourself creating videos about like forever. And just like think of how you can add value, not think like, what can I get out of this? Think like, how, what, how can I add value? Like, what is it in me that I am passionate about that I can also add value? 
and we're here to be creators, right? So like, I love the process, like from beginning to end of like creating these videos and like making the thumbnails and like doing like the whole process. So, and like YouTube, they say the average channel, it takes 22 months to get a thousand subscribers. So this is like, I look at this, like, I just like, you need to slow down, relax. It's not like what you're getting. Try and just think about like, what, how you can add value and like think about it like really 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 long term right wow the average 22 months i'm sure it didn't yeah. take you 22 months how long did it take you no it took just over three months yeah. I was, whoa this is but like still it's still like it's not a huge channel right it's still like a small channel i look at it but it's growing great and i love it and i love the community i'm building like another thing that i love to do which i think is great too for growing a channel and that's not why I do it but I love like writing back my subscribers and like interacting and feel like you connect because I know when I write a comment on another YouTube channel I love when they like interact with me so I love that feeling or when they respond to a DM and sometimes if I feel like they see my DM and they don't write back or like they're writing other people and they don't write me back I'm like oh okay whatever right so like I like to like make them feel like they're heard and like include my viewers a lot because that's why i do the channel people i want people to watch right and people to gain value and inspiration and more positivity in their life so yeah <laughs> hope that <No>. helps. <laughs> no? yeah thank you so much that's such good advice thank you and i love that you know the value of one view you know the value of that and i appreciate that a lot um okay so uh how how long has it been two years you said right you've been on youtube no, it's been 15 months. 15 months. Wow. Yeah. 15 months, yeah. Wow. Okay. Now, obviously, your channel is about health and specifically the raw vegan lifestyle. So I want to know, how did you discover it and when? Yeah. So it was, so I became raw September 1st, 2016. This is literally the best day of my life. That, that was the first time I felt like this is my real self. I just like could not believe how good I felt by the afternoon of the first day. I felt like my true self. And I felt like in the years before that, I'd been chasing a high with like alcohol. Like it was kind of like, let's have a barbecue and drink a bottle of wine every night. And like runners high, like all the, like I wanted to just like feel that. And then I just finally felt like for the first time in my life, I was introduced to my higher self, my true self. Like, and the first time, the best I'd ever felt while alive on this planet, hands down. So even by the end of the day, my husband was like, whoa, you seem like happier and like what's happening, right? And it just literally has changed my life like nothing else. I only think like I wish I could have discovered it when I was in high school or younger, but I'm so grateful I discovered it when I did. So now I'm turning 40 in a couple months. So this was, uh, yeah, September 2016. So almost six years ago. Wow, I cannot believe you're almost 40. That's crazy. Ah, I know, right? I ha but I feel great. I feel better than I felt when I was 20. Literally, I feel so good. You look, you look, you probably look better than you looked when you were 20. Yeah, too. I do. To, I'm, I'm happier with how I look now than when I looked when I was a teenager or in my 20s or early 30s even. Yeah, you look 20. I had health problems. That's what led me to raw. I went to all kinds of doctors. I had so many digestive problems. And I, it was to the point there was even like blood in my stools. My digestion was a mess. I was having panic attacks. I would end up in the hospital. I would sometimes call my mom. The panic attacks would be so bad. I literally thought I was going to pass away. And I would call her and say like, I'm going to pass away today. Because I don't know if anybody's had panic attacks before, but you literally think you're going to die. I don't know if my electrolytes were a mess. Like I was just all a mess, like all like a mess. And it was scary when you have these panic attacks and then you're fearing having another one. You're just in this state of fear. And um, I had a lot of anxiety, major depression, and I was, I was very fatigued. Like I would be even tired if I'd walk up the stairs and stuff. So going raw, it literally fixed all of it. Like the main reason why I love being raw is because I have so much energy. I have so much energy and I, I need it to, to run my life, right? I, want, I need to feel my best. I have no choice, like, cause I'm with my kids. Like I need to be a good mom like take care of my kids and I'm with my kids alone a lot of the time. Like, so it's like, I got to have my best self put it, put my best self forward. And so this does it for me. It gives me so much energy and food should give you energy. It should fuel you. You should have it. And then you should feel like alive, invigorated, energized and amazing afterwards. Not like, Oh, I need to take a nap. But if that's what you want to do and you want to eat food that feels like you need to take a nap after I am not judgmental at all. So like, even if someone needs Taco Bell all day, I'm not judging them. Everybody's got to do what's best for them. And this is definitely what's best for me. 
I love that. Okay, so you mentioned your kids. Um, and so you're a busy mom, you're obviously an entrepreneur. And so I'm wondering, how does your family eat? And does that affect your you being raw? How do you work that out? Yeah, so I just did a video on that recently on my channel, how to be raw when the people around you aren't, because I do have one raw friend here in Toronto, Eli from the Free Melon Society. Yeah, I love him. So he's awesome. We're really close friends and I'm really grateful for that. But the majority of people around me are not raw. My family is not raw. My family's not vegan, which I've talked a lot about on my channel. So I'm constantly preparing meals for them and I just make it work because I feel so good. And I feel like the longer you do this lifestyle, your cravings stop for that stuff. So like, I don't even look at like their foods or like if we go out to eat and they're eating things that I used to eat, like I don't even look at that and think I want it anymore because I just feel so good. And I know if I eat it, because I've tried over the years, if I have any cooked food, I feel so different instantly. And then I'm, I think, why did I eat that? Because I don't feel as good. I'm all about like, do what makes you feel your best. And if that's raw, great. And if, you know, cooked makes you feel your best, great. It's all about doing what works for us, not some guru or person out there but find what works best for you and do that. So this is what works best for me. So I stick to that regardless of what the people are doing around me. And yeah. Did you, t t don't kill me. Did you say how you discovered the Robbie Ginn lifestyle? Cause I don't know if you shared. No, how. after, so after I was having all the health problems, the doctor said, maybe you have celiac. So maybe you have problems with gluten because nobody could figure out what was wrong with my digestion and all these problems. And so I removed gluten from my diet and right away within like just removing gluten from my diet, like so much of my anxiety had gone away, like, and my brain fog had gone away. I didn't even know I had all this brain fog and all this anxiety. Like I used to get anxiety, even if I was like buying some pasta at the counter at a store, I'd get anxiety just like, I don't know. It was like really excessive anxiety. So all that was gone when I removed gluten and I had all these improvements. So I was like, what? And so that sort of is what started me to realize how much things affect us that we put in our body. And then I removed dairy and my skin really cleared up. And then, so it led me on this journey to study like foods all the time. And I was trying different diets and I even tried uh, the blood type O diet cause I'm blood type O. So that's a heavy meat diet. So I was eating like a lot of meat, but I wasn't experiencing like, like vitality and health that I knew I should feel like deep down. So then I kept researching and then one night uh, I saw something by Dr. Sebi who said uh, about the raw living foods. And that's when I decided to try it the next day. I was like, how have I never heard of this? And then that the, the rest is history, I guess, like they say. Uh, wow, okay, that's incredible story. You know what's funny, Jillian? Me too, it started with gluten. I was told to take gluten and, and that was the slow progression to like figuring out what is going what am i eating and um like how it's affecting me wow incredible we're very similar i also was on like atkins and stuff and um doesn't work for me either wow okay. so so you um so that's incredible so you don't have so people a lot of people struggle with eating raw and they always say that it or eating healthy they always say it's because their family has a lot of junk food in the house um do you keep junk food in your house for your family no, they don't eat much junk, but I feel like with my kids, I feel like I just have to be careful because the more I try and if I'm like, this is bad, I don't want you eating this, this is bad. Like, because everywhere you go, the kids do not eat like really clean these days, right? They didn't when I was a kid either. I mean, I get it, it is how it is. So the more I feel like I'm like, don't eat that, that's bad. Like, I try and not be like that because I feel like it's like human nature. Like if you're telling somebody not to do something, it's almost like my daughter, I feel like wants it more and I don't want to like give her food issues. So it's really hard. I'm still learning how to navigate that. Like in this world we live in with like still incorporating like so many raw fruits and veggies. And I feel like what works great with them eating a lot, getting them to eat like the healthiest foods is like, it really works when we're like at the park or we're going for walks or stuff like that. And like, we're out and about that. It's like, they so want to eat. Like if I bring like the apples and stuff like that makes it easier, but no, I don't really keep like, there's not really any junk food that I can think of that's in my cupboard or fridge. Like they still eat pretty clean, but they, they don't eat like me. It, it, again, I'm like navigating it right with, kids it's hard because you don't want to i don't want to give them any issues around foods or start like labeling good and bad and like create all sorts of chaos so i'm still working on that i love that jillian i have a support group that i run every monday night 
just last night we spoke about this issue, Jillian, okay? So basically we are releasing the judgment from what we eat because from our parents, we heard, you know, you are good or you are bad depending on what you ate, okay? Mm -hmm. Just now dealing with these emotions in the support group, like literally what you're talking ah. about. So you have yeah. like psychic abilities because I literally am dealing with it myself and all my ladies in the group. Um, you, it's a, you have to start to tell yourself, no matter what, you are enough. It, it doesn't matter what you eat. It doesn't matter what you don't eat. It doesn't matter what you wear, what you do, what you don't do. You are good enough, no matter what. And that is so true. And I love how you're raising yeah. your kids. So important. But I also love that, oh, go on. No, and I just wanna say, I think how we label it is so important too, right? If like we believe something's bad, then it has a different effect on us when we eat it than if we like don't believe it's bad. So like our beliefs are so important too around food and how, like what we eat and stuff too. So I just try and be careful. But again, I'm not perfect and I'm still really navigating with my kids how to, how to do it, right? <laughs> so. Yeah, of Chef AJ always says that like food now for her, it's either compliant or non-compliant. It's not good or bad. It's just compliant or non-compliant. So it like takes the, identity you know uh, uh, yeah um yeah i love that you don't have junk in your house too because that's the thing like all these parents i talk to and i'm sure you do too people reach out to you for advice every single day and they're like i can't eat healthy because of the junk food in the house but who's putting the junk food in the house yeah <laughs> true yeah true but not no, the fairy they do sometimes eat some junk food especially like at school it's hard like at the right after school i go and we hang out at the park every day and stuff and like so they definitely eat what the other kids have and i don't get in there and say like don't do that because like that's just gonna make things even worse and embarrass them and create it makes it worse right if i like resist against it so yeah it's not easy but you're doing the best you can and i love that so now you recently spoke about how you lost weight without really even trying. You didn't change your diet. Um, you started intermittent fasting. Uh -oh. yeah. Are you still doing that? And what have what inspired you to do that? And what's your uh, experience? Yeah, and I just want to say too that was never. I'm so happy with my weight. I actually weigh a little bit more raw vegan than I did before. So before I was usually about 125 to 130. Now I'm usually around 115 to 125. Now I'm intermittent fasting, so it's 120. Usually it's, it's, but it's, it's definitely, um, or no, sorry, sorry, I screwed up there. So whatever, I'm, but I'm more now, but I'm a little bit less because the intermittent fasting. So I've started intermittent fasting. So I stopped eating around three o'clock. So I did this the last two days. At, or I've done this for a bit now, but I got back on it the last two days because I fell off it for a bit. And then I noticed I feel like way different when I wake up in the morning, when I stop eating earlier in the day. So what I'm doing is I start eating between eight and 9 a.m. I get up pretty early with my kids around six or seven. And then I start um, eating between eight and nine. And then I try to finish eating by three o'clock. So this is just like, I make sure I eat a lot of calories still though. So my calorie count is around like 25, 2700. I've always eat a lot of calories. And I think that's why this lifestyle works for me because I don't restrict and I really believe in eating a lot. Um, but I do lately, I have been like playing around with intermittent fasting and stopping eating around three. And it is great. Like it, my sleep is just even better. When I wake up, I feel amazing. So like I said earlier, I'm just all about doing what makes me feel the best. So I'm playing around with it and I love it. It's been working really, really great because your body's not working so hard to digest all that food when you're sleeping, right? It's a huge difference. And I can guarantee for like anyone out there, if you play around with it and practice how you feel eating, if you eat at like 7 or 8 p.m. versus if you stop earlier and earlier. So I even notice a difference if I stop at like 5, how I feel like the next day versus 3. And it's like that quote, like what you eat today walks and talks tomorrow. So I really do believe like the things we do today and like the thoughts we have and like the way we eat and how we eat and when we eat really affects our day tomorrow. So like, that's why I'm doing it right now. It works great for me. And I get it. Some people don't like it and they're against it. And like, again, like I support what everyone does, but, or like respect what everyone does, I should say. But um, yeah, it's going great. I like it right now. I love it. Okay. Do you have any like quick tips for people to stop eating that early? Because like, th I can imagine that's pretty, that can be hard for a lot of people stopping eating like so much earlier than the rest of society and their family. Do you have any tips? 
Well, again, yeah, I know that can be hard. And most people want to eat their dinner with their families, right? So I totally respect that if they don't want to do that. Um, but again, like, I just really put me feeling my best first, even if it means some things like that I have to sacrifice. And I don't know if I will do intermittent fasting forever. I mean, last week I was doing it and I fell off of it a little bit. So then the last two days, like I was saying, I just got back on and I feel great. But uh, yeah, that's where I'm at right now. Amazing. I love it. Okay. So now can you tell us some of your like favorite go to um, breakfasts as a, you know, five, six year raw vegan? Yeah, absolutely. So I feel my best in the mornings and like into the before lunchtime and stuff like that. Having the lightest stuff, it makes me just feel so clear headed, but still having like a decent amount of calories. So usually I'll have juices or smoothies or really light fruits for breakfast and all the way until my heavier meal through lunch or the early afternoon. So I have smoothies. One of my favorite smoothies lately is uh, fresh bananas and frozen mango, pineapple, avocado, and kale. That one's really good. And then sometimes I'll add... What's your base, boo? Um, I just, I add water to blend it. And then I use fresh bananas. Yeah. Wow. The That's it's frozen and then another one that's really good it's so simple mangoes are in season right now um it's just fresh bananas and then frozen mangoes and then i use water to blend it's so good but um i love even watermelons in season right now just starting the day with a fresh watermelon juice so i will either buy it all cubed up because sometimes that's just easier and i'm busy with my kids or cube it up and you throw it in the blender so it's so many people don't realize you can make watermelon juice in the blender you don't even have to juice it because the juicers can be annoying sometimes right and take time so you just throw the cubes in the blender i throw in a little bit of mint blend and it's a juice and it's so good so yeah i have light stuff i try to have a green juice too like late morning stuff like that and it just makes me so high vibe it starts off the day right and it's more likely to keep me on track well i stay on track all the time anyway now but i feel like people are more likely to stay on track with their health habits through the day if they just get this extra clean high vibe stuff in them in the mornings so yeah i eat super clean because my kids are at school then too. And I just, I want to be super productive and get a lot of stuff done in the mornings. And that, so those things just make the eating clean like that makes me feel so creative, clear headed, productive, energized. So that's why I do that. That's how I eat in the mornings. I love it. I love it. Can you tell us, so you have your biggest meal for lunch or for dinner currently? Well, right now it's different. Right now I'm having stuff like smoothies, fruits, juices, green juices all through the morning. And, and then I usually work out around 12 o'clock. So I've been working out for like an hour. That's just done so much for like my happiness, positivity, mental health, confidence. And then I have a big meal after that. So I've been having that usually around two, um, like a really, really big meal because of the intermittent fasting. And then something else to fill me up around three. So some dates, but I'm trying not to eat too many dates because the dried fruit, I just think is really bad for your teeth. So I'm trying not to get in the habit of that. Um, or like some chia pudding, chia seed pudding is one of my favorites too, stuff like that. Oh yeah, you make a great chia seed pudding. I saw your recipe. It's so good. Uh, and it's filling. So filling. Um, yeah. Okay, and now last question on the food what is like your go-to easy favorite raw vegan dressing that you love to make um i would have to say it's probably fully raw christina caesar that one's so good that one's really good but that being said that one has garlic in it and i am trying to go off onions and garlic because i toyed around with it in the past and onions and garlic there's a lot of like spiritual people and buddhists and stuff like that that don't consume onion and garlic because they say it makes you more angry more aggressive and oh. a lot of things and i know some people think like this sounds crazy right but i've tested it with myself so many times and that's how it also affects me so they just say the way they can stimulate the nervous system or something but it definitely has an effect on me and my dreams and how I feel and being a little bit more like angry and not as connected to like my more loving higher self. So I am going to drop the onions and garlic. I have dropped them the last few days and, but the, her Caesar has the garlic, but it's really, really, really delicious. And it's been my go-to the last couple of years. It's so good. Yeah. That one's probably amazing. It's probably like cashew based or pine yeah, it's cashews, hemp seeds, um, lemon, garlic, nutritional yeast, a couple other things. I won't say the whole recipe because it's hers, but um, check yeah. the channel because it's really delicious. Incredible. I'm sure. You can't really go wrong 
with the yeah. cashews and the nutritional yeast. Okay, so now I want to touch on, um, and then if anybody has any questions, we'll, we will get to Q&A in a few minutes. So if anybody wants to have any questions answered, Jillian said we can ask her anything. Yeah. So put it in <laughs> an open book. Tessa said, I don't eat onions or garlic too, so it's not just me. That's good. Yeah, yeah, Tessa, Tessa, she, she is like on it. She's in all the lives. She's like on it. And no, she said, uh, you're probably learning so much from all these interviews you're doing. Um, like, I did want to say right before our call, and I want to say I'm so sorry I was 15 minutes late. I take being on time so serious. I'm like really crazy about being on time, so I'm really sorry. But I did an interview with uh, John. He's under raw, raw Alchemy on Instagram. So he today is on day 200 of a juice cleanse. He's doing like a deep spiritual juice fast. So that's why I was late because our call, I thought it would be about 40 minutes, the interview, and it was 90 minutes, but it was really great, really interesting. I love hearing everybody's different experiences and where they're at and just trying to provide a big variety of content for people to take in. Wow. Yeah, I love it. I can't wait to watch it. Um, I love your interviews. You, what would you say is one of the biggest things you've learned? I mean, this is going to be tough. This is probably going to be a tough question because you interviewed so many people. But what is one of the things that you learned during an interview that you can recall that was like an aha moment or that really kind of changed you? Has there ever been any moment like that in an interview that you can think of? Um, I feel like there's just been so many. I talked to just the most amazing people that just have such a spiritual side. So even talking to John today, talking about shedding the ego, and we talked so much about how important our vibration is. So that was a really good aha conversation today about how when things are happening that we feel like are wrong, it's not like the world outside of us that we need to fix. Like this person's trying to control me. We need to fix this person or this person's drinking in my family and I don't like this. It's just like this conversation was so good because we talked so much about how it's not that, it's your vibration you need to change, like that you need to turn around, like change your vibration, focus on you. So I'm just all about like, how can I improve my vibration and think more positive and feel better to then attract more positive things. But every interview, it's just so amazing. I, it's so amazing talking to everybody and I don't really edit them. So you see like for the most part what they are, which is great. And Sarah Erica's was really inspiring that I did. And that was just like, wow. She went on a uh, 365 day juice cleanse because she was in a really bad state. And at that point was told like, there's nothing else that the doctors could do. They tried so many things. So she was like, okay, I'm gonna try juicing then. Cause her, she was in a wheelchair. She couldn't even walk. She was just, her health was like really, really bad. She was basically told like she'd have to sit around and wait for her time. So she did a one year juice cleanse and at the beginning of the juice cleanse, she couldn't even walk. And then at the last day of the juice cleanse, she was running a marathon. So that video, I put the clip in the video. It's like, it literally made me cry. So just stuff like that is just so amazing to see how people can improve their lives for the positive all the time. It's just incredible, you know? Wow. Yeah. I'm um, so, I can't wait to watch that. I, yeah. Wow. That would definitely make me oh, cry. Um, this girl, Sky Conway. So I interviewed her recently. She's one of my subscribers. And she was so thin and frail. And she like couldn't even dress herself. Her health was just in such a bad state. And she went raw 10 months ago. She believes in eating abundance. She eats like a really great amount. She eats just so amazing. And she's totally transformed her life, literally. Like I was crying in her interview. I can't wait to share that. There's just like so many beautiful stories. So many like amazing moments meeting everybody, you know? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, time is going really fast with you. So <laughs> let me try to get through all the questions that I have. Um, okay. So you did a 30 day social media fast, right? Yeah, I did. And that is like unfathomable to most people. Like most, most people can, will never go 30 days without social media. So can you please tell us why you did it and what yeah. you experienced? Yeah. Okay. I love this question. This was like one of the best things I'd ever done. I had no idea how much I would benefit from this. And it was definitely the best month I'd had in at least a couple years. Um, I just felt like I had gotten into a bit of a negative slump. And I mean, it can happen to all of us, even if we are raw, even if we're eating healthy. Um, I wasn't sleeping too, because my three-year-old hadn't started sleeping through the night yet. She has now the last three weeks. So I feel amazing. But the lack of sleep was really affecting me and my mental, just, my, you know, when you sleep, 
you need your proper sleep because your brain then processes all the stimulation from the day before. So if you're going day after day after day after day, not getting that and being woken up like every hour, every two hours, like it can really affect you mentally. So not only that, but all the stimulation every day, right? With Instagram, I like to write everybody back. I love everybody with my channel, with everything. And then there was just some negativity going on and some other things. So I was like, I need to take a step back here. I need to just get off of here for a while because it's giving me more negativity than positivity and it was draining me and affecting me. So I decided to leave for 30 days and I was like, maybe I'll quit everything for good. I don't even know, but I was kind of at the point where I just wanted to quit everything. So I was like, so I quit everything for 30 days. Even my channel, I didn't post on my channel. I didn't go on my channel. Um, and it was just the most amazing experience I'd ever had. I felt drastically less anxiety. I didn't realize how much anxiety social media was giving me. So like, I usually am very active on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. So since coming back, I don't use Facebook now. I had to scale back because I realized it's too much to use all three. Um, but it was incredible. My anxiety was drastically down. I felt more calm, so much more calm and present and just like I wasn't waking up, like, let me check my phone, the phone going all the time and stuff. It was, and I highly recommend it to anybody who wants some mental clarity. And maybe you're having a hard time making a decision in life, or you're feeling like you're in a negative slump or something like that. It's just, it was the most incredible experience. I would definitely do it again. I, if I can, then I might do 30 days once a year, because it was really, really good. I want to do it. I want to do it so bad. Wait, so you kept your phone on, you just deleted the apps? or you? Just yeah, I didn't go on any social media. And I did try to just take time like totally off my phone too. And not even I did take a period where I didn't even go on my phone because I was like, I need a break, you know? Yeah, I've done seven days. I cannot even imagine the peace and joy and just relaxation I would feel after 30. Uh, you're really inspiring me. I want to do it. Good. I didn't miss it at all. Like the first two days, the first day and a half, it was not so much I missed it, but you're used to the habit of like checking it, right? So it was more just getting over that habit. And then I didn't miss it at all. I did start to miss YouTube like the last two weeks because I, I love YouTube. I don't even really watch TV shows. I just watch YouTube all the time. So I even cut myself off of doing that on the 30 days. So I missed like the co watching content on YouTube and stuff too. And I missed interacting with my subscribers and viewers because I love doing that. They're so amazing. Yeah, I would miss it too. I, yeah, that's my, YouTube is my best friend, I always say. Okay, mm -hmm. so now uh, just a few more questions. Um, oh. I want to know, where do you see yourself in 20 years? Whoa, 20 years, good question. No. No. <laughs> um, no. I see myself still raw like I said I have played around with having cooked foods and even when I was first raw the first couple of years I did play around and sometimes have some animal products like some salmon eggs I have learned like that does not work for me I feel amazing so I definitely do see myself still raw maybe learning some more things just like I still learn things about it it's like how I've learned that supplements are important for me I became deficient in some things when I was three years in so like I still am learning things along the way but I do see myself still raw um I do definitely see myself creating this is just my favorite thing I've ever done starting the YouTube channel and doing all this so I see myself having like a really big platform by then a really big successful channel because I want to reach so many people and just grow these videos and I really want to continue uh, the interviews too. I don't know like where I'm going to take my channel if I'm only going to do interviews or keep the variety of content. I like doing a variety right now, but in the future, I might just take the path of like do interviews like how Lewis Howes does, but I'm not too sure. I, I literally thought of Lewis Howes when I first saw you. That is so funny. You said Lewis Howes. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah. And I definitely see myself leaving Canada. So I'm in the next couple of years, I'm hoping to move actually. So I would love to move somewhere like Los Angeles or maybe Miami. I don't know, somewhere that's a warmer climate. And I definitely see myself moving to the States. So I do see myself there. I love Toronto and it's been great to me, but I do want to move to the States within the next couple of years, 100%. And so I see myself there and there's many things I want to do. I don't know if I should share them all. Should I say like, I don't know. Is it good to keep them secret? I do have a kid's book, which I love, but I definitely want to have more books and maybe some courses. I do not, I want to just create stuff that's from my heart and genuine that I feel like can add value and definitely not be like, my channel's never been like a sales channel. It costs me money. It's never, I'll never be like salesy. So it'll always be genuine. 
but I do want to build like a big empire in the vegan world. There's a lot of vegan products that I want to create that I'm really passionate about. And yeah, so, and I, I want to have a dream home in the States, wherever I end up moving, whether it's Los Angeles or somewhere beautiful and just have loving relationships with my kids and inspire them and inspire my kids to follow what they're passionate about and to live healthy lives and stuff like that. <laughs> so love it. Oh, I felt like I just heard a vision board, like spoken, <laughs> you know, like a verbal vision board. I love that. Okay. So, um, I'm curious what real quick about the supplements, what sup what were you deficient in and what, what do you take? Yeah. So when I was three years in, I became deficient in a few things. So it was mainly B12. So now I don't have them there in the kitchen, but I take an all in one supplement. So I can send you the link if you want, because they give me 10% off if anybody, they give you guys 10% off if anybody buys them through the link, say with Jillian or whatever, but they're great. They have everything. So they have B12, they have a proper amount of iodine, they have K, they have D, they have DHA, EPA, they have, um, everything in one they have some zinc and some selenium as well because i just think there's so many nutrients to think about i mean from my perspective i get it that some people are like i don't need supplements my blood works fine and some people get their blood work tested and they're fine like 10 years in but that wasn't the case for me um so i think they're important and i think they're especially important too if people are gonna do the vegan path while they're pregnant or nursing i think it's so important to stay on top of your blood work and check your blood work and make sure that like everything's okay because we have to be careful because there are nutrients right that we have to make sure we're getting so absolutely um we had a few questions jillian about which john were you speaking about before um, so he is under raw alchemy, raw dot alchemy. Yeah. So he's on day 200 today. He was, he's such a nice, like light, positive person. And he was amazing to talk to. Um, we got a lot of great comments, just not questions, but just saying how much everyone loves you. So nice. And, um, they just have a great, uh, energy from you. They really feel your energy through the screen. And um, someone asked, have you ever heard of um, re resetting your dopamine receptors? Do you feel like that's what happened with you? You reset perhaps on your fast, on your 30 day um, social media fast? Yeah, I've never really heard that or like watched content on that. But now that you say that, definitely, I really felt like I did that. I think it's just great. Even if someone is feeling overwhelmed and just overstimulated, even to just turn it off for like three days or two days or like something can just do wonders for you. And it's made me realize I need to set more boundaries in certain times when I go on social media, though I haven't totally stuck to that right now yet. But um, I think it's important to set boundaries and maybe take like, I think I might take Sundays off completely from social media. Like it's just a family day and I'm not on my phone at all. You know, that's what I do. I, t I try so hard to shut off my phone on Sundays and sometimes I can't because of meetings or interviews, but mm -hmm. yeah, even like you, like Jillian just said, one day a week can make a big difference. You mm -hmm. know, uh, it's easy to do also, you know, Sundays it's like, you're not working usually and you're with the family. Okay, so last question for you. But before last question, so you said you had a children's book? Yeah, I do. Oh, it's right, I have it right here. No I way. Don't... Yeah, it's Princess Papaya's ABCs of Happy Foods. Hold on one sec, it's holding up my, I use it to hold up my, <laughs> I have like, I have the, sorry guys, I am not technical. I just knocked over my phone one time. I am uh, just like me. It's like random shit holding up her phone. See behind the scenes with these interviews. I'm the most amateur and I'm usually in track pants. Like you can't tell, but yeah, this is my kid's book. I love it. Princess Papaya's ABCs of Happy Foods. Okay. So this was when I was married under my married name, but my last name really is Barry. But it teaches kids like A to Z about the real living, like real foods, like figs and how much, how happy they'll be when they eat them. So like, and more energy, F is for figs. And it has like K is for kale. And then, so it's good for a variety of ages because they can, like the older kids can read the text and learn. And the younger kids love to like the quizzes in here and stuff. So I love it. It was so much fun creating a book, like beginning to end. And I read it in my daughter's class when I created it a few years ago. And it was crazy. Like I brought in a lot of fruits and veggies. So many kids couldn't even name a cantaloupe and stuff. I was like, what? So it's good to just introduce them. And it's not about being vegan or raw vegan. It doesn't mention the word vegan once or anything. It's just about the foods and how happy you feel. 
And I feel like the more you can show the kids the foods and teach them, then the more they are to recognize them at the store when they see them and want to try them. And these kids do want to try them and be healthy. Like May, when her friends come over, they're like, oh, you have mangoes? Can I have some? Like they, you know, so. Wow, that's amazing. Can we get that on Amazon? Yeah, it's on Amazon or Barnes and Noble online too. And what's your last name? What do they look for? So it's Alcorn on there. That's my old last name. Yeah. Amazing. Thing. Oh my gosh, I cannot wait to check that out. It's so cute. And I also agree we need to get to the youth because I actually met a former employee who was 24 and she had never tasted a raspberry. Wow. And I was, you know, shook. I was like, how is this possible? But it's possible. Um, okay, last question is, um, if you could tell everyone in the world one thing so I'm going to put headphones on every single person in the world. It's going to be translated into every language that they can understand. This is too no intense. Pressure, <laughs> no pressure. What would you tell every single person in the world? Young, old. Oh my gosh. It's so hard to pick one thing. There would be like so many things. Cause I love like, it's why I do these interviews. I love sharing these messages. And I feel like maybe I'm not always the best person at articulating these messages. So that's why when I see something that inspires me, I feel like it's like my purpose to like share it. I feel like some sort of messenger, right? That's why I do these interviews. So I don't know if I'm the best person to articulate to answer this, but I don't know. It maybe be something about food, but it might also, I'm really into what we believe and that we create our lives based on what we believe. So it might be something uh, based around that and the law of attraction that I'd want to tell everybody too, that like, you create the life that you believe, you know, you are what you believe, like whatever we believe and feel and think is what we create. So I think almost those messages are even more important than the foods. Like I really believe we are the creators of our own life. Conversations with God is my favorite book of all time by Neil Donald Walsh. And it just has like the most amazing messages ever. So I would probably, he's just so articulate and well-spoken. So like if I had the time, I would take something like really well said from his works probably to leave with everybody. So I was God. All right, I'm gonna read that book. I have not read it. It is the best book. That book came to me when I left Costa Rica uh, two or three years ago. I forget what it was, two years ago. I left Costa Rica. My family left Costa Rica because we lived there for a while. And on the bus to the airport, a girl I met there from Montreal, she was like, you have to read Conversations with God. So I was like, okay, so I downloaded it and then I started listening to it. And then um, it just totally changed my life. And it was perfect timing because right when we got back to Toronto, my husband and I had a, had a, we ended things. We decided this isn't working. I think just the trip traveling around the world with our kids and 15 suitcases after selling everything, it was not the brightest idea. And everything just came to a crashing halt. So that book came into my life at the perfect timing too. And I cannot recommend that book enough. It is, if I could leave, if like I was told you have one book to leave behind for the whole universe, it would be conversations with God. And if anybody's not religious or like into God, it's not like a religious book at all. Um, but it's just so deep and incredible. And I recommend it on Audible. It was, I found it harder to read in the actual book form, but on Audible, listening to it, the way it's done is so life changing. I'm going to get it today. I got a credit. I got an Audible credit. I'm going to <laughs> get it. Okay, thank you so much, Jillian. I have a million more questions, so I'm sure I will ask you to go live with me again. Yeah. But um, if anybody wants to find out more information about Jillian, her amazing YouTube channel, I will leave the links below if you're on YouTube right now. If you're on Instagram, go to her page, follow her, and then click the link in her bio and check it out. She's interviewing amazing people. She's spreading the, the message about how important it is to take care of yourself and to be conscious of what you're thinking, what you're eating, and how you're feeling. And um, yeah, I thank you so, so much. This was really nice. Thank you, you're awesome. Thanks so much, I love you. I love you too, boo, and I will see you soon, okay? Okay, bye. Bye, guys.